All right, so today is um, World Archaeology Day, so I'm going to make a video explaining the Harris Matrix because I had a lab in it a couple weeks ago and there really wasn't any good resources online to explain what it is and how to do it. Now, the Harris Matrix was, I guess, created by Edward Harris in 73. It's a digital online program now. If you Google mm, Harris Matrix, you'll find it. And the whole principle is it makes um, a wall of an excavation look clearer and easier to understand when you're looking back on it. So um, we're going to start off with an easier example and then get harder. So this is the first example. You can kind of see on the bottom I did it already. Now with numbering, I like to number from the bottom to the top because I think it makes it a little clearer. Because what you want to do is you want to demonstrate that this, when people lived here, they lived on this layer. And then the second layer was deposited and then the third, and then the fourth. And with stuff like this, it's important to remember that each layer is a living space. So people lived here, people lived here, people lived here, and now people live up here. And I think that's just an important concept to remember. So this is really easy because it's very simple. So Harris Matrix report looks like, okay, the four, then you bring it down to the three, and then two, pardon my handwriting, I'm not good at this angle, and then uh, one. See? It matches up, the line said one, two, three, four. Um, I think this is pretty simple. It just, um, this is the main point of the Harris Matrix. It's to have, so when, say you don't have this picture of you can say, okay, this is what this looks like. Now it's going to be a little bit more complicated, which I think will also make the Harris Matrix more important. Okay. So here's this one. This one's on number. So, what do we do? Well, this is why going from the bottom is important. Because if you're numbering from the top, you might be one, two, three, four, right? But look at it. So, people are living here, and they built this, which looks like a mound, could be a hill, right? So that means people lived up here. And then it got filled in here, and then here, and then here. So really, numbering it looks like one, two, three, four, five. And you might be a little bit confused as to why I gave two and three different numbers. Well, the thing is, because when you draw the matrix, they're divided, right? They're divided by one. So they're going to be a little different, and it's important that your Harris matrix reflects the fact that they're divided. So it's going to look like this now instead. 5, 4, and then it's going to branch out. 2, and then on this other side we're going to have 3, 3, and then they're going to connect here, and then they're going to come back together and say 1. And so I think this example makes it a little bit clearer why the Harris matrix is so easy. Because looking at this, it might be easy to forget that two and three are correlated, or that they come after one because just the way everything's deposited. With the matrix, it's really easy to see. Oh, it goes four, five, and then two and three are separated, but they're the same time period, and then one. And then to, uh, to finish it up, I'm gonna do a slightly more complicated one that adds another layer to the matrix. And, uh, this guy. Now, it's important to take this just one step at a time. Do the same thing we've been doing for all the other examples. What's the first deposited layer? This guy, right? First deposited layer. And then what happened? And then this guy came up. Two. Now what's this? This looks like somebody who lived on this layer dug down, right? Okay, yeah. So we're not going to number this yet. But then, so what came after two? Looks like these guys, right? So, three, four, and then these two, yeah. Five, six. Now, it looks like this guy was created by the people who live right up here, right? Okay. So you give it its own number, but 
things that are cut down into previous layers actually get two numbers. So think about it like this. So there's the cut that goes through the layer and then the layer itself. So the cut we'll call seven, but we're gonna call the actual whole itself eight. And then the nine it came and the nine, the layer it came from nine, and then ten, and then eleven. Right? Now you might be thinking, how the hell do I draw this? Like, what's going on here? Well, I'm going to show you. Give me a second, because I'm going to look at my example again to make sure I do it right. All right. So it goes like this. So you start at 11, right? 11. And then it goes down to 10, and then 9, and then what comes after 9? So the first thing people did was 7, right? Because they dug down. My numbering is a little weird, but that's the point. As long as the position of the numbers matches up with these guys, that's all that matters, right? So 9, 9, 7, and then 8. And then what comes after 8? Then 8, you got these guys, right? So. You got six, five with the line in between, and then you got three and two, three and four, sorry, three, four, and it comes back together, and then that goes two, and then one. So, sorry my handwriting's not great, but It kind of makes it a little bit easier. See, you're just looking at this, you might be a little bit confused about where everything goes. Then you number it, then you give it the matrix, and now it's a lot clearer, right? Because, especially with this guy, right? This is, this hole is a little confusing. We don't know what it is because we don't know the artifacts in it. Those are artifacts I drew in. But, see? You know, the top layer is this, and then this, and then the people nine excavate, dug down, they didn't excavate, they dug down seven and eight, and then five and six are on the same layer. Three and four on the same layer, two, and then one. And that's the Harris matrix. Here's an example I did in one of my labs. See, this is probably what you'll be seeing more of. This is super complicated. And see, this is what the Harris matrix looks like for this one. So this is what it looks like when you combine everything. And if you're doing something this complex, ask your teacher. You, you'll, If you've watched this video, you'll be able to get it more than I could when I walked into the lab, but it's confusing. If you want, wait right here. So, I numbered it backwards. But so, see, top layer, right? And then, see, I numbered it all wrong. So we're just gonna look. So this is the top layer, and then it's divided, right? And then what happens here is six, which is this little guy right here, right? This isn't a cutout. This is just a little hole. See how it's not really cutting? This is clearly cutting through everything. This is just a hole. So then what that means is that 6, which is the hole, also touches, what number did I say this was? 2? Yeah, also touches 2, and 6 also touches layer 10. See, 2, 10. My numbering's not great, so it's not a great example, but I think this is a good picture that kind of shows how complex the matrix can be once you finish it up. 